If you can describe a problem better than your audience can, they will assume that you know the answer and follow you anywhere. Eben Pagan, Marketing Guru When I started down this path of finding truth, I came up with the saying, Listen to all, follow none, and walk your own path the best that you can. This has helped me sort through many different solutions that people offered. Far too often people would describe the problem properly, but when you got down to their solution to the problems, the devil was usually in the details. We all know a grand majority of humanity is in complete denial about the coming mathematical collapse of this economy. To those that are awake, the grand majority of them seem to be obsessed about only when it happens. Very few at all have a realistic plan to do anything the day after it happens. And almost every program I saw out there did a great job of properly describing the problem like any other good marketing piece would. None of the solutions they offered ever resonated with me. I think the first gut reaction to people waking up is to run to the mountains. Lone survivalists like you see on American Preppers tend to be individuals to small families investing in massive amounts of food and ammunition to ride out the zombie apocalypse that they're waiting for. These people are aware and prepared and they will be very successful in their survival if they are out of urban areas. Being a former infantry marine, this was my first impulse until I realized that if the zombies didn't get me, the depression and paranoia would. I knew that from the marines, it was the community of like-minded individuals that make for a better chance of survival, even to make the most miserable times more bearable when you have a buddy in the foxhole that you can rely on. This prepper mentality can be expanded into survivalist groups and militias, but also from my experience in the Marines, knows that some of the most prepared leaders of these groups don't necessarily share the same family values that I do, and that these groups tend to attract a lot of single armed men. This is not an option for me and my family if I can help it. Then there are people who are just waiting on the rapture or just believing Jesus is going to fight their battles for them. Let me first say that I do resonate very much with Jesus, especially the Jesus that threw the money masters out of the temple. And I do believe that the meek shall inherit the earth. Some of these believers seem to think that just having silver is a sin, and often cite Ezekiel 7.19, where the Bible says, They will throw their silver out onto the streets, and their gold will be an unclean thing. Their silver and gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it has made them stumble into sin. These Christians should know that the Bible was written back when they did not know what credit default swaps, junk bonds, subprime mortgages, and the rest of the fiat debt illusion. I believe that divine retribution is coming to those that thrived off of this debt and death paradigm, and that the only thing that will be standing is real tangible wealth that comes from the earth, like food, water, and yes, even silver. And for those that say you can't eat silver, everywhere I have gone throughout my entire life, wherever there has been poverty, I have always been able to buy food. In fact, in the poorer regions of this world that I have traveled, you'd be amazed at the amount of food that you get for so little money. That being said, I do believe that people should stockpile a good buffer of food and should not just be only in silver. And that buffer depends on where you are. If you're in an urban area, you need more. If you're in a country area, you need less. But at the end of the day, there is a limit to the amount of food that you can reasonably store or need. And the same cannot be said about silver. Also, these Christians should know that faith without action is dead. Simply praying and being a good person did not help millions of faithful Christians over this past bloody century, as well as faithful Muslims or Buddhists. Having a strong faith is important, but you do need to take massive dramatic action. Now, if you're a part of a Christian community like the Amish or, say, the Mormons, where prepping is a way of life, then you're on to something. But that has much more to do with the strength of that community. But also be prepared to do as the higher-ups in that community tell you to do. For those that are more capitalistic, there are guys that properly describe the dollar debt problem, but their solution tends to go right back into the paper paradigm, with deflationist paper pushers pushing bonds as a solution, or inflationists pushing mining stocks. I found that more often than not, these people tend to have a financial stake in promoting these stocks, where they either own the stocks, or they're granted stock options, or they get five-figure a month advertising deals to push these stocks. This seems to me to be insane, as when the currency collapses, the markets, the economies, the P.E. ratios, the companies are going to be destroyed as the global reserve currency dies along with trade and markets. Only real tangible wealth outside the paradigm is the answer, and not some golden colored piece of paper. Even in the physical stacker community, there seems to be the idea if they just stack enough, they'll come out the other side wealthy. 
and that at some point you're just going to sell your silver to the suckers at the top. This line of thinking doesn't resonate with me because it seems like it's the greater fool theory in investing in silver, and they don't truly understand the real wealth of silver. But this anger phase of humanity is not something we can just close our eyes and wait for it to blow over. There needs to be a balance, and using precious ounces to buy and prepare a fully functional survival outpost is not a great use of precious resources, especially if you're the only one that's going to make it out there. Besides the fact that you need to become a jack of all trades and devote a ton of time and energy to things like energy production or farming that you may not resonate with. Then there's the James Bond dream of leaving the country with multiple passports and fancy wine-sipping haciendas in South America. Unless you have a lot of wealth and time, this is, again is not a realistic option for a grand majority of people. This is besides the fact that most of the world hates America right now, and they only put up with us because of the dollars that we bring. But I can assure you when the dollar collapses, I would not want to be the American in a strange land when the locals decide to vent their anger on what America has done to the world economy. Then there's the communistic community approach, which seems to be most evident in the Zeitgeist movement. These new age collectivists are repackaging 100-year-old Bolshevik economics with a cool new spin. This again is a movement that properly describes the problem and spent a great deal of time bringing in people into their movement, only to offer them the same old solution of a collectivist solution. They want to create a community that does not have money or a market mechanism to reward those for the fruits of their labor, and it will fail like all other collectivist ideas. Always has, always will. Besides the fact, those that seem to follow this don't seem to have any capital now, much less after the debt paradigm collapses. And then finally, I wouldn't want to be in a world controlled by robots, especially ones designed by communists. Then there are those that seem to be attracted to these sustainable villages. They do not seem to value silver as a means of transferring wealth from one paradigm to the other, or, or owning firearms to defend their communities. Then there is another approach I saw, which is called the Thrive Movement. While I resonate with the conscious revolution that he talks about, but once you get past this alien technology that they think is going to power the community, you can see, once again, the devil is in the details. Their solution's first step is to, get this, Cut the military budget in half and simply get rid of the Federal Reserve System. Step two is to reduce the role of government to its constitutional role along with introducing sound money. Really? Is that all we need to do? Well, good luck with that pipe dream. The entrenched powers of the psychopath at the top of this debt and death paradigm would never allow that to happen. This system is far too gone and too corrupt to waste any time inside trying to fix it. It is far better to walk away from this paradigm than wasting any time, energy, or resources trying to fix it. In fact, this paradigm must fail, and must fail so miserably that people actually stop thinking that debt and collectivism is the answer. The real-world ignorance of this Thrive Plan and the economic realities that we face was enough for me to mentally repulse from this good-natured dream. I thought long and hard about what the best course of action was, drawing from different solutions on what to do, and I came up with the ultimate exit strategy.